Now at 6 and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, a fatal shooting in a Houston gas station leaves a 34-year-old dead. The suspect still at large. Police in Wharton County are investigating a fatal three-vehicle crash. And the controversial immigration law, Senate Bill 4, heading to the federal appeals court. What one attorney has to say. Another gorgeous day out there, abundant, abundant sunshine. It's going to be with us until the weekend. And so the eclipse may have something to deal with some clouds. And we'll be talking about that coming up. And a pair of Bloomington Lady Cat signing to compete at the next level. And it's East versus West Day out on the diamond. I'll have all that in sports. You're watching 25 News now at 6. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Don Brubaker. And I'm Karina Garcia. We begin in Wharton where a fatal crash is under investigation. Authorities report the crash happened Tuesday night around 8.15 p.m. on Highway 59 and involved three vehicles. They say a 2003 Chevy Trailblazer traveled north before it hit a concrete barrier on the north side of the highway and then rear-ended a crane track truck. Once it came to a stop, it was hit by a 2013 Kenworth track tractor trailer and the driver of the trailblazer, Roy Spradley Jr. of Bowling, died at the scene. Now an update on the ongoing case in the murder of an Edna cheerleader, Elizabeth Medina. 25 News Now weekend anchor Adam Seibel joins us with more. Adam? Yeah, Karina and Don, tomorrow, April 4th, the man accused in the death of Edna cheerleader, Elizabeth Medina, will be in court at 9 a.m. A Jackson County grand jury indicted 23-year-old Rafael Romero in February. He's accused of intentionally causing the death of Medina while in the course of committing or attempting to commit burglary, robbery, or aggravated sexual assault. We spoke with Elizabeth's family today, and they told us that Elizabeth's mother, Jackie, will be in court tomorrow for this update and that only Romero's lawyer will be present. Don Karina, back to you. Adam, thank you. Governor Greg Abbott endorsed Steve Greenwell for Lavaca County Sheriff today. In a statement, Governor Abbott said, quote, Steve Greenwell has the real world experience needed to help the Lavaca County Sheriff's Department keep county residents safe. I know Stephen will advance tough on crime policies that will crack down on drug smuggling, fight against human trafficking and keep dangerous criminals behind bars, unquote. Here's your viewer poll this evening. You can scan that QR code right there on your screen to vote. The question is, do endorsements influence your vote? According to our poll, it looks like 96% stand at no, and the remaining 4% stand at yes. Thank you for voting. We want to hear your opinion. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to take part, and we're going to have an update later on 25 News Now at 10. An 18-year-old suspect was arrested after graffiti was sprayed on the Referio County Sheriff's Office building and some downtown Referio businesses. Kiana Andrade faces a charge of graffiti with monetary loss of between $750 and $2,500. She has posted bond. No one was hurt after a vehicle fire closed U.S. Highway 59 northbound this morning. The vehicle was on the 961 on-ramp to U.S. 59. Authorities say the fire was accidental. The roadway is open now, but drivers are advised to go slow. And now let's pause on your local news and take a look at your forecast with Chief Meteorologist Mac Bettis. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. The uh, Doppler is on over Texas, but there's not a raindrop in the entire state. Tonight, all the big stuff is out here. They're having snow in the Midwest. They're having vicious weather now rolling through uh, New Jersey and uh, New York. So for the next few days, couldn't ask for nicer weather. For the weekend, oh my gosh, we got problems with the eclipse. And we'll be talking about that coming up in a few minutes. Stay tuned. Mag, thank you. Houston police are on the hunt for three gunmen wanted in connection to a deadly gas station shooting. Video from Monday night shows the suspects were all dressed in white and took off in two different vehicles. We counted more than a dozen gunshots outside the southeast Houston gas station. The target, this black Cadillac SUV seen here riddled with bullets. HPD detectives saying four men were inside. One of them shot and killed as he tried to escape. The other able to run inside the store and hide after being hit. The other two uninjured. Those who work and live nearby telling us they were well aware of what took place here. I saw it on social media. You know, it's pretty sad. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I come here all the time because I work right down the street. We get gas here all the time. 
HPD saying the victims were targeted by four men. These photos showing three of them. Police saying the fourth never got out of their car. People like that just don't have no regard for human life. But you know, everybody has to be accountable for their own actions. Detectives telling us the suspects were in two cars, a gray four-door Mercedes sedan and this great charger seen leaving the scene. We, we live in bad times, man. I, you know, he was doing in there everything. A 34-year-old man died in the shooting. The 29-year-old with him was transported to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. An attorney defending Texas plans to arrest migrants suspected of entering the U.S. illegally told a panel of federal judges Wednesday that it's possible the law went, in his words, too far, but that it will be up to the court to decide. The 5th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals panel stopped Governor Abbott's immigration measure, Senate Bill 4. Texas was allowed to enforce the law before it was put on hold by the same panel that heard arguments Wednesday. The law allows any Texas law enforcement officer to arrest people suspected of entering the country illegally. And in Boston, a federal judge ruled that the migrants sent to the Martha Vineyard in 2022 can sue the company that dropped them off. Three Venezuelan migrants and an immigration rights group filed that lawsuit, claiming these systems misguided them. The migrants say they were initially told they would be flown to Massachusetts, but were not told they were going to Martha's Vineyard until shortly before they landed. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and other officials were named in that lawsuit, but the judge dismissed claims against them, citing jurisdictional concerns. The company did not respond to a request for comments. Now, measles is a highly contagious, serious airborne disease caused by a virus that can lead to severe complications and even death. There's an increased number of cases across the country. We spoke with the director of the Victoria County Health Department, David Gonzalez. He told us this is due in part to unvaccinated children. So we're definitely seeing an increase. Um, and it, just to, to compare to last year, we only had about 58 cases um, and four outbreaks over the whole course of 2023. So we've already met those numbers. Gonzalez reports a 2 to 3% drop in vaccinated children over the past five years. That adds up to about 250,000 more children exposed to measles. Most of the cases were linked to international travel. They were mostly unvaccinated children around a year or older in age. The Victoria Central Appraisal District election set for May 4th is canceled. Only three candidates registered in time for the election. They are certified and as unopposed and elected. Joining the Victoria Central Appraisal District Board of Directors are Judy Clegg in at large position one, Zed Stewart in at large position two, and Dale Zuck in at large position three. Now here are some of the top headlines you can read in the Quero record. If you are interested in becoming a teacher, Quero ISD is holding a presentation April 8th at the Quero Junior High School Library. This event begins at 430. And also on April 8th, the Quero City Council will be appointing two replacements. Read these stories and more at DeWittCountyToday.com. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell. I talked to a friend of ours today. She texts our YouTube page oh, yeah. all the time. And you just click the like button, click For the, the notification bell. You can see Crossroads Today on YouTube. And stay with us, both Donald Trump and Joe Biden securing their candidate nominations. And coming up on 25 News Now at 6, key takeaways from Tuesday's primary. Also ahead, we get ready for that eclipse next week with an expert eclipse chaser in Fort Worth.
A new poll finds most Americans want the Supreme Court to reject Donald Trump's immunity claims. The Marquette Law School survey reports 62% of respondents oppose granting former presidents immunity compared with 20% who support the idea. The poll comes just as the justices prepare to hear arguments in the special counsel election interference case. Trump argues that his efforts to overturn the 2020 election results were part of his official capacity as president. President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump both claiming wins in another round of primaries Tuesday. Now, although they've already secured their nominations, both teams are paying close attention to what voters have to say, especially in crucial battleground states like Wisconsin. Almost any path to victory will run through several swing states, including Wisconsin. Back in 2016, former President Donald Trump secured a win there by fewer than 23,000 votes. And then in 2020, President Joe Biden won by fewer than 21,000 votes. I came to office determined to uphold the duty that gets us through one of the toughest periods in our nation's history. And we have. Wisconsin primary voters are now sending both Biden and Trump a message. More than 47,000 Wisconsin Democrats, that's roughly 8% of those who went to the polls, marked uninstructed at the ballot box largely in protest of Biden's handling of the war in Gaza. If they won't listen to our calls or our emails or our letters, then they better listen to our votes instead. Trump also faced pushback as he continues to try and reach more moderate voters. A vote for Trump is a vote to save Wisconsin and is a vote to save your country. In Wisconsin, more than 76,000 Republicans, that's roughly 13 percent of those who voted, cast their ballots for his former primary opponent, Nikki Haley. Another former opponent, Ron DeSantis, and uninstructed brought in about 30,000 votes combined. Here's some of the top headlines you can read in the Port Lavanca Wave. The Calhoun County Commissioner's Court approved the renaming of a section of a road between Ferrick Road and Watley Road. The new name is May Bell Castle Road. Plus, the Seafarers Center at the point, Port of Point Comfort, Port Lavaca, is offering a wide variety of services for the men and women whose cruise ships are passing through. You can read these stories and more at the PortLavancaWave.com. Yes, we're just five days away. <laughs> Five days Five away days from away. a total eclipse of the sun. People are excited to see this rare event. Yes, but for one man in Fort Worth, this eclipse has a very special meaning. The 105-year-old has been chasing them since the early 1960s, witnessing a total of 12 solar eclipses. When you step into Mr. Laverne Beiser's Fort Worth home, it's impossible to not notice how much he loves eclipses and taking pictures of them. That was a real excellent position to take a picture. This 105, soon to be 106 year old amateur astronomer has been chasing them for more than six decades. You've seen eclipses since 1963 was your first one, uh -huh. and your last one was last year. Last year, right here in Fort Worth. I, I've seen 12 eclipses. We've traveled all over the world to see them. Well, I was, I was lucky I had money back in those days. Good thing for him, April 8th's eclipse will happen right overhead. I could go walk out the door here and look up and see it. You don't need to go anywhere. His obsession with the cosmos, he says, began as a high school student in Ohio. My science teacher, I loved, I, I enjoyed all, all my science classes. From there, he'd go on to graduate with a mechanical engineering degree from the Ohio State University in 1942. He moved to Fort Worth after and helped design airplanes at Carswell Air Force Base for the rest of his career. But it's the thrill of eclipse watching, he says, is one of the greatest passions he has. Well, you see one, you want to see them all. They're so pretty. When that bro when it goes total and the corona comes out, everybody goes, holy, look at that, holy back, look at that. And cameras start clicking and everybody's yelling. His favorite one so far, the solar eclipse of 1979 in Williston, North Dakota, where he snapped this picture. This is your pride and joy That's right here. That's my pride and joy because Why? it's hard to take. You have to bring your camera up to a blank sky up there. The sun's down here. You have, 
you hope you got it pointing in the right direction. When you realized you had captured this picture, what was that like? You must have been really excited. Well, I said, oh, I'm glad I, uh, it worked. I got it. He showed us around his shop. I made the whole thing. I made this, I made that. I ground the mirror. Where some of his handmade telescopes sit, this one was made almost 60 years ago. And with his 13th eclipse fast approaching, Mr. Beiser says he knows just how special this one will be for him. I'm 106. I don't see, but they don't come by one or two or a couple of years. I may not see any more. I may not see any more eclipses. I'm Ken Molestina, CBS News, Fort Worth, Texas. Wednesday's Powerball drawing is now more than $1 billion. No. It stands at an estimated $1.09 billion after there was no winner Monday, making it the ninth largest U.S. lottery jackpot. If someone were to win, they can choose to spread the money over years or take a lump sum of $527 million. There have been 39 consecutive drawings without a jackpot winner. The odds of winning the grand prize are 1 in 292 million or less if you're Mac. <laughs> <laughs> but there's still a chance. Yes. You know, one in 292 million. <laughs> but, but I'm still going to buy some anyway. Uh, folks, we're looking at a beautiful afternoon, 78 degrees. That actually, I believe, is our high temperature for the day, which is right on the money for a seasonal temperature this time of year. Gorgeous weather for about two or three more days, and then it gets complicated as we get into eclipse weekend. We'll certainly be talking about that coming up in just a moment. We'll be right back. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Another gorgeous day out there. Low humidities, abundant sunshine. I mean, uh, look, the satellite picture is on. There's not a cloud in the entire state of Texas. I mean, from Brownsville to Amarillo, there is some stormy weather and some leftovers from the big storms that came in a couple of days ago. But that's not the problem. Here's the big problem. This is our storm, actually, the one that brought us the front. It is a huge wind up thing. It's producing snow from upstate New York all the way around to the Midwest. Heavy rains and the big severe thunderstorms just beginning to push off the Atlantic coast after a pretty rough day. So the central part of the country is doing very nicely under high pressure. Thing is, things move in the weather world and this is going to be changing for us. 83 is our forecast high tomorrow, 86 out in San Antonio, 88 Corpus Christi and 84 up in Houston. Our temperatures are slowly going to be going up, but uh, still within reason. I mean, it could be worse, I guess. We're looking at 79 on Saturday and about 80 on Sunday and 81 on Monday. Now, what am I talking about? 
What's the problem? Well, I've got to show you because I, I got to tell you the truth. That's all I do here. So this is the truth. There you see the cloud cover by the time we get to Saturday and Sunday. By then, we'll pick up the sea breeze. The sea breeze always brings us back the humidity, the moisture, and the low clouds. Okay, so you'll see more and more cloud cover. Thing is, by that time, there's a frontal system coming at us from the west coast. So here's our tonight storm that's pulling offshore. This is what's giving us the really pretty weather for the next couple of days. But as we get into Friday and Saturday, that moves uh, east, and then that storm starts rolling uh, toward the plains. Now, this is Saturday. Sunday, uh, which is, you know, still the weekend, you're going to start seeing storms fire in the plains. Now, at this time of the year, people in Dallas, you know, they go to sleep and they wonder, is the house going to be here in the morning? Because they get these severe thunderstorms rolling through. That's what's going to happen on Saturday and Sunday up there. And then Monday, the front actually just barely gets it here and then pulls back. So it's not coming through and clearing us out. It's getting here, triggering the shower activity, and then it's backing up because the south wind is so strong. So that leaves us with the uh, distinct possibility. We will, <clears throat> we will have some shower activity around here on Monday. You heard about the Taiwan earthquake, and uh, this is what it is uh, swimming at the top story of a hotel in the swimming pool while the earthquake is going on. It, it's kind of funny right now, but I'll bet you it's not funny when you're in there and the whole building is going this way and that way. So uh, it was a huge, huge story. We hadn't seen an earthquake that large in about 25, 20, 30 years. So tomorrow, lots of sunshine looking good in Puerto, uh, Puerto, Puerto La Vaca. <laughs> and looking good in Cuero as well with the winds finally ending out of the north and slowly beginning to turn around out of the south but we should get up to about 83 degrees. So once again, we're looking good for Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Sunday, we'll watch to the north, thumbs, some showers possible for us. And then again on Monday as well, and then maybe on even into Tuesday. So let's just see how it all works out for us for Eclipse Weekend. That's your seven day forecast, reminding everybody we do have a QR code. Love for you to scan that, put Crossroads today on your phone. Here's Karina. Thank you, Mac. And now here's Zach Brown with your sports. It is East versus West day out on the diamond and the Texans are now Super Bowl contenders. I'll have that in sports. A pair of Bloomington Lady Cats will become Patriots as they both signed to compete at the next level. Diana Reyes and Sierra Valadez both put the pen to paper as they committed to the University of Valley Forge in Pennsylvania. Diana Reyes will play volleyball and awesome Sierra job. Valadez will be her teammate once again as she too will play volleyball but also play softball. So she will be a two sport athlete. Both of these young, star young stars, excuse me, out of Bloomington could not be more excited for what's to come.
It's very exciting. Um, I just want to give all glory to God because He got me here. And it's just a blessing to be able to play two sports. And it's just a blessing to even get to play a sport. So it's just a very good experience. Very nerve wracking, but it's very good. It means everything to me. I've been wanting this like the longest. When I was middle school, I was like, I want to do this. But it really means everything to me. And I'm just like happy I had the opportunity to continue playing volleyball at the next level. Congrats to those two on their signings, and they got to do it together, go to the same school. Victoria East chasing a district title in the West Warriors, a much different team this year, chasing a playoff spot, and today is game one of a two-game set between the two teams. The East Titans know what's at stake, trying to avoid the upset against a tough West Warrior team. Any game in District 29 5A is huge, and then when you throw in, you know, the East-West deal, uh, there is a little bit more sense of urgency and just wanting to play good, you know, the, the rivalry and stuff. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a, definitely a playoff-type atmosphere, a big game atmosphere, and we're excited for it. It's another important game, the most important game right now. It's the next game on the schedule, so the approach is the same. I think we just need to simplify the game, don't try and do too much, and I think we'll be fine. That game just underway over at Riverside. Victoria West trying to stage an upset and continue their impressive turnaround. And that's going to lead us to your viewer poll. Who will win tonight's big showdown on the diamond between Victoria East and Victoria West? 63% say Victoria East. The other 37 say West. East is no doubt going to be the favorite, but the West Warriors have been a scrappy, very good team this year. Should be exciting. By the way, game one last year when these two met ended in a walk-off, so should be exciting out on the diamond. How about the girls? The Hallettsville girls continue to torch everyone in that district. Macy Jansky, maybe the most dangerous bat in that lineup, went yard three times in the game against Palacios. She was a big part of their 25 run outpour. She has 13 bombs on the year. The Lady Bramas ranked number four in class 3A. In Goliad today, day one of the district track meet and some state hopefuls as well. This was the prelims for the day, so a lot more to come tomorrow evening for the Tigers. This is Lamont Franklin who shined on the hurdles. UIL state track meets now officially less than a month away. Goliad had a few gold medalists last year, hoping for a few more this year. The Houston Texans made a blockbuster trade today and may have entered official contender status. Stefan Diggs has been traded to Houston for a second round pick. Houston's offense is now loaded and they have the third best betting odds to win the Super Bowl next year. They are tied with Baltimore. San Francisco is number two and of course the Kansas City Chiefs come in at number one. Well that is it for your sports. Donna Karina back to you. Thanks Zach. We're back in a moment. Today was the first day of open auditions for the Radio City Music Hall Christmas Spectacular in New York. Finally tonight, we may be just getting into spring.
kind of like the Cougars offense last year. One, two, three, kick. But the Radio City Rockheads are already looking ahead to the holiday season. Today was the first day of open auditions to find new dancers for the Christmas Spectacular. The ladies will go through a number of callbacks over the next few days, and ensemble dancers will be cast next week. The Rockettes, who make the cut, will also perform in Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade mm. and the Rockefeller Center Tree Lighting. Oh my goodness, that's, it seems like so far away, but you know, it's only seven to eight months away. And, you, <laughs> you know, know I have one a friend dream. who's auditioning for that, actually. Really? Yeah, she lives, really? In, she lives that lifestyle. She can do that, oh, that she can do high it all. kick thing. Wow. All. Shout yeah. out to her. I hope she makes it. Yeah. Hope she yeah. doesn't Best get hurt. That looks really tough. Oh, yeah. Then oh, we yeah. can get tickets to go and see the show. <laughs> well, she has dancer's feet. You know what a dancer's foot is? Uh -uh. Come on. I would say look it up, but it, they're all bruised and beat up, but it's oh. definitely worth it. She says the lifestyle is worth it. Yes. They, have, they have five toes? Yeah. Might as well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. For those dancers, might have an extra toe or something. They're uh, great. Yeah, it's amazing. Is the weather going to be great the next weather's few days? weather's great for the next couple of days. It's a big question mark, however, for Eclipse Weekend. Yes, uh, while we've got sunshine now, there's a front coming at us on Sunday, and that may produce some shower activity around the state. Now, I'm talking to everybody. Uh, on Sunday and Monday. Now, Monday is Eclipse Day. 1.30 is the big moment. Uh, will it be clear or cloudy? It all depends on where you're standing. And <laughs> it's like, uh, like Clint Eastwood would say, are you feeling lucky? <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you, Clint. I'm back. And uh, thanks for joining us. We hope to see you back here tonight for 25 News Now at 10.